Hey, welcome back everybody to some more Bolt action here and our continuing coverage of the Market Garden campaign book. So we got uh, the next scenario in line here, which is uh, number nine, and that's called Successful Coup de Ma. And this is uh, a bit of a, as it says, what if scenario. So, so one that... Uh, not necessarily everyone is going to be able to do as they really go in a description here, but certainly you can scale it down and do some sort of tricks to sort of recreate what they're trying to do here. So the situation here <clears throat> is that three troops and the HQ of the recon squadron have completed the first part of the mission described in scenario eight. Check our previous video there. They've reached the bridge, driven off the handful of sentries and taken up positions around the bridge ramp to await the arrival of the infantry. So now they have to defend the area against a German counterattack, and then historically, though, the um, the scout uh, troops here of the uh, 9th SS uh, crossed the bridge and basically headed south uh, to against the Americans around Nimegen, and then attempted to return and basically got uh, wrecked. So, but for the purposes of the scenario here, it's really about just sort of recreating fighting the British recon squadron first. So, at first glance, as it says here, and this is again, if you want to all out recreate this as is cool certainly a great spectacle but again not necessarily realistic for any one person to have all the required things but certainly maybe uh, as a sort of a multiplayer game or just another way of scaling it down or recycling some vehicles but you know as it says few people will have the 50 odd german armored cars half tracks and trucks of the recon unit not to mention dozens of british jeeps right so Rather unrealistic for one or two people, a couple people to have this. But again, you can pare it down and recycle destroyed vehicles, maybe use some um, other means of sort of representing the wrecked vehicles and stuff like that. So, uh, as it says here, the British force would have deployed from their jeeps to take up defensive positions. So technically, you can even just avoid having the British jeeps at all. But again, if you really want to play this up, it's nice to just play this, uh, you know, just show everything that would have potentially been there and make it look truly spectacular, but again, realistic constraints as far as people's collections. So, the forces involved here, the British player can't deploy more than half the recon squadron for this game. The balances, or the balance are uh, assumed to have been committed to the defense of the south end of the bridge. Furthermore, one troop of the recce squad has been retained by divisional HQ, so the British force is limited to a max of 10 squads of five men each, and they've dismounted from their jeeps. They can be in buildings or in slit trenches, each squad will have a Vickers K gun. Uh, one squad will have uh, one and three will have a Piet, and one and three can have a two-inch mortar. And every squad does have a Bren gun. In addition to this, there should be a Polston 20 mil AA and an HQ group of five men with rifles and SMGs to give a total of 12 order dice. And then the British should also have an ample supply of AT grenades. The British can deploy reinforcements of up to two sections for Jeeps at any point from turn three subject to the normal bolt action rules and then the german force in contrast has three armored cars six half tracks and three protected trucks carrying nine squads of infantry but with only 12 order dice to reflect the challenges we'll flip that to the next page here the challenges of moving so many vehicles through a relatively narrow space so in turns three and four the german player receives reinforcements of two squads of infantry and dice to match the protected sorry the protected trucks Count as infantry, or sorry, not infantry, gosh, can't even read, uh, ordinary soft-skinned vehicles. However, passengers count as being in hard cover against all small arms fire and may only shoot if the vehicle remains stationary that turn. And then for both, all troops and vehicles on both sides are considered to be bets, and the British do enjoy the stubborn rule. This is not an equal points game, so again, factor that in from the outset, right? But one based on the size and nature of the forces that would have been available to both sides. So, if we continue on here, the actual setup for how to run this. So, most of the action would have taken place on the approach road rather than the bridge itself. That could be sort of, um, you know, if you don't have that fully uh, representative or represented with the terrain, again, that can be sort of maybe just off the edge of the map or in some other way represented, but we need only um, model a raised roadway running lengthways throughout the center of the table with some buildings on either side uh, from the northern end of the bridge where the road left the embankment and formed a flyover across the street that ran parallel to the river. <clears throat> the road itself should be a minimum of eight inches wide, and then the embankment should extend to a further eight on either side. Some buildings should be placed on the embankment so that the middle and upper floors are adjacent to and have a clear field of fire along the road. 
All other buildings are assumed to have line of sight to the road from their upper floors only. The pedestrian paths on the road bridge itself provide hard cover from fire across the road or from below the embankment. Um, and then last, but not along the length of the river here. So, again, a fair bit of involvement in setting that up as far as terrain goes. And from there, the deployment. So the Brits, all British units other than the reinforcements, of course, start on the table. And the British player must start the game with six units of their choice in ambush. Three of which are considered to be hidden. And the German force enters along the road but can deploy in any direction and does not require an order dice on turn one. So pretty sweet deal there. And then basically, what's the point of the mission here? The Germans have to get across the bridge before the arrival of the British Airborne, and the British basically have to prevent them. So pretty simple there. First turn, German player does have to use all 12 of their order dice on turn one. Any units not committed on turn one are subject to the usual reinforcement rules, second wave rules. And the duration here of this crazy, crazy game, the Germans need to get to Niemegen uh, as quickly as possible. The game ends if no German vehicles have exited the table by the end of turn six. Otherwise, it continues until the arrival of British airborne troops under Colonel Frost. Throw a D6 at the end of turn seven. On a one through three, the Germans see Frost coming and abandon the op. On four through six, they press on and continue this process for subsequent turns so that Frost will arrive on a throw of two through six. And then victory conditions here. So the pressure is on the Germans to get to Niemegen. The quicker the better, but without a crippling loss. The mission is to get across the bridge and engage the Americans there, rather than to dislodge or destroy the defenders um, at Arnhem. In addition to the usual points for destroying enemy units, the British score an extra point for each armored vehicle destroyed and automatically score a decisive victory if no Germans have exited the table uh, by the end of turn eight. So it's another one of those classic ones that we've seen here, sort of the back and forth. You know, the Germans in this case have to get somewhere and the Brits have to prevent it. And it's really just a matter of doing their utmost to prevent any German vehicles from leaving. So that will be the major focus while the Germans really just have to do their best to get at least one vehicle uh, over there. So it's definitely going to be um, imperative to avoid or d deal with the British Piats as fast as possible. But then also uh, the the 20 mil AA is probably a priority target. And then from there, just trying to open up some lanes and get vehicles moving. So it's a pretty fun scenario. Again, if you certainly if you have all the pieces to actually do this the way they're suggesting, they're suggesting could be an amazing experience maybe something like a display game get new players interested um certainly if it's all painted and just you know terrain looks spectacular and all that this would be a great one to sort of capture the magic of the game and really get uh players interested but um for most people with maybe just more realistic collections if if there's not like a large group you know you can certainly pare this down and strip away some of the more complex bits of the scenario and just run that as well and certainly the the core of this can be applied to other uh and opposing armies in different theaters as well and just change the concept a little bit but could still be fun with different forces involved in different areas of the war so let us know what you think guys in the comments if you've tried this crazy scenario here so scenario nine out of market garden and what your thoughts are they kind of give a rough deployment here as well so you can kind of have an idea and how that has gone for either side to what level did you recreate this scenario as described and what kind of modifications did you make so hit us up in the comments there guys be sure to like and subscribe and also check the comments or the yeah the comments below um and follow the link there uh, to support the channel if you do want to pick up some warlord goodies so thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one